Hi, 1114 students. Uh, one more way to look at parasitic draw or parasitic drain. This is using an inductive ammeter, amp probe if you will. I'm going to turn it on. All right, what this does is clamps around the cables. I'm interested in measuring the uh, current flow in. Now, I've got 0 .0, 0 0.0023, somewhere thereabouts. I should hit the auto zero. I might have to do that once or twice, but I think I'm going to be happy with that. One to two milliamps is what this is showing. Now, when you do the zero, when you do the zero, you need to make sure that the clamp is closed. It's not around any wires, and uh, so just kind of like this is fine. I'm going to hit the zero again. All right. We're going to go ahead and place this around the battery cables. Now, what I've got here, positive side, negative side is kind of buried, a little hard to get to. I've got three cables coming out of this positive side. I'm going to need to make sure that this inductive current probe goes around all three of them. I need to capture current through all three. I don't want to miss any. So I'm going to open the clamp up, put it around the cables, attempt to make sure that I capture them all. All right, so we're pulling about 2.115, 11678, somewhere in that neighborhood. That's amps. All right, so just like we did in the past, we're going to now go and start to remove fuses one at a time from our underhood junction block, and if necessary, move in to other fuse boxes. All right, I'm going to move them one at a time. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start with the maxi fuses that are hot at all times. Start with this 50 amp fuse here. Pull that out. Check the current. Current is still drawn. I'm going to put him back in again. Check the current just to make sure that he didn't increase any. If he increased, you know, then I woke something up and I'm going to have to leave it time back out again. All right, let's pull the second one. Now, pull the second one, I decrease in current. Let's show you that. All right, so the fuse that I removed in the uh, underhood junction block happened to be that one there, the 50 amp battery. That's the maxi fuse. Unfortunately, the wiring diagram doesn't have anything uh, labeled the battery fuse. So, we did do a little digging. All right, underhood relay center, the one there marked battery, 50 amp fuse, is fuse number seven. So we're looking for the maxi fuse seven. Now, looking at our wiring schematic, there is no fuse seven listed in this underhood junction block. Okay, bounces around, no fuse seven. So. All right, so fuse number seven is not shown, but notice it's taking me to uh, a page marker, A. So it's telling me to go to that page, page two of four. So let's go ahead and move over to there. And lo and behold, on page two of four, there is my main fuse number seven. All right, so when I remove that, I lost the parasitic draw. So what I have to do now, I have to look at all of these circuits that fuse number seven is protecting. Now, I notice there's quite a few other fuses that are located in the instrument panel uh, fuse block. So I've got the uh, fuse two for the transfer case. I've got the circuit breaker here. I have fuse number 19. I have fuse number one. Fuse number seven. and fuse number 13. So I'm going to look at those fuses. I'm going to remove those one at a time while watching for the parasitic draw at the battery. So fuse numbers 1, 2, 7, 13, 19, 21. Okay, number 1. No difference. Okay, number two is missing. So now it's on to number seven.
My pole number seven, parasitic drain, drops. So circuit number seven is what I need to look at, or what fuse number seven protects. All right, I know fuse seven was the problem. So I look at the schematic and I see that fuse seven, providing power and protection for pin 16 of the dial link connector and for both of the auxiliary power outlet sockets. So the next thing would be to go and look at each of those three to make sure that nothing is plugged in, nothing's been wired into them, and uh, we'll see what happens. All right, there appears to be something plugged into the data link connector. Follow that over. Hey, look at that. Some idiot's got a breakout box, and into that is a uh, light bulb. So that appears to be our drain. If I unplug that, we're going to see that the drain does go away. Okay, about 50 milliamps is what we're going to use for purposes of class. That'll be the maximum parasitic drain. Uh, some manufacturers want to be even below that. Now, you can see I've removed the parasitic drain from this, closed the door. I've got the keys removed from the vehicle, and you can see that the amperage has decreased <laughs> right to the point where that shut off. So anyways, we're pulling about five milliamps once everything was happy. That's all I got. Thanks for watching.